Welcome back to our Microtic tutorial series. Have you ever wondered how devices in a network seamlessly obtain IP addresses and communicate with each other? Or how a network defend itself from unseen cyber threats lurking in the digital shadows? Well, you're about to uncover the secrets behind these mysteries, because today, we're diving into the dynamic world of DHCP and ARP. Let's start with the basics. What is DHCP and why do we need it? DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It is a system that automates the distribution of IP addresses and other network parameters in a local network. When a computer connects to a network, it starts by broadcasting a DHCP discovery message to get an IP address. The computer sends this broadcast message to everyone because it doesn't yet know the address of the DHCP server. In response, the DHCP server receives the discovery message and replies with a DHCP offer. This offer includes an IP address that the server has available along with other network configuration details like the subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS server information. Once the computer receives an offer, it responds with a DHCP request message. This message is sent back to the network, indicating that the computer is accepting the offered IP address and other network settings. Finally, the DHCP server sends an acknowledgement back to the computer. This step confirms that the IP address has been assigned to the computer for a certain lease period. The server also reserves this IP address so it won't be given to another device. Now that you know what DHCP is and how it works, let's see how to configure it on Microtic. To set up a DHCP server on Microtic, first, you need to configure an IP address on the interface that will serve DHCP requests. In Microtic routers, all interfaces except Ether1 are typically connected to a single local bridge, with a DHCP server enabled on this bridge by default. This setup is great for simple configurations. However, for more customized network setups like configuring a separate DHCP server, you might need to either remove the interface from this default bridge or set up a new bridge. We'll explore bridging in more detail in future videos. For now, let's focus on removing interface Ether5 from the default bridge as an example. Now you need to assign an IP address to this interface. You can do this by going to IP addresses in the menu. Click on the plus sign to add a new address along with its subnet mask. The 24 in CIDR notation indicates the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and allows 254 devices in this segment. Next, specify the network. For our IP address and the subnet mask, the network would automatically be 192.168.1.0. This represents the whole network range that Ether5 will manage. You can also add a comment to identify the interface as a DHCP server. Remember, you should use private IP addresses for local network configurations. Refer to the relevant table for more information. Now you could proceed with the DHCP setup wizard found under IP DHCP server in the Winbox menu. By clicking on DHCP setup, the wizard will guide you through all the necessary steps. However, we will show you how to perform this setup manually. First, we need to create an IP pool that will be used for DHCP leases. An IP pool defines the range of IP addresses that the DHCP server can allocate to clients. To create a pool, go to IP pool and click on the plus sign. When defining the range, it's advisable to leave out a portion of the IP addresses for static assignments, which we'll discuss later in this tutorial. Let's set our DHCP pool to offer addresses in a specific segment. This setup effectively allocates 155 addresses for dynamic distribution by the DHCP server. The remaining 98 IP addresses will be available for static assignments. Once the IP pool is set up, the next step involves configuring the DHCP server itself. Navigate to IP DHCP server and click on the plus sign to add a new DHCP server. In the DHCP server window, you will need to fill in several important fields. Give your DHCP server a name. 
Select the interface where the DHCP server will operate. In our example Ether5, choose the IP pool you created earlier. Least time is the duration for which a client can use an IP address before it needs renewal. A common setting is 3 days, but you can adjust this based on your network needs. Now, set up the network for the DHCP server by clicking on the Networks tab within the DHCP server window. Click on the plus sign to add the network. Additionally, specify the default gateway, which should be the IP address of the interface Ether5 that we assigned earlier. Here you can also specify other optional settings like DNS servers and NTP servers. These settings will be provided to the DHCP clients. It's not mandatory to specify DNS server addresses in this setup. If they are not specified, the router will act as a DNS relay, using the DNS servers that are currently configured on the Microtic router. It will then provide its own IP address as the DNS server to the clients. Congratulations! The DHCP server is now active on Ether5 and will provide IP addresses and network information to clients connecting to this interface. To ensure everything is working correctly, connect a device to the Ether5 network. The device should automatically receive an IP address from the range specified in your DHCP pool, along with the other network settings like the default gateway and DNS servers. You can now see the DHCP server settings by going to IP DHCP server. You can also see the DHCP leases by going to leases. A DHCP lease is an entry that shows the IP address, MAC address, hostname, and other information of a device that has obtained an IP address from the DHCP server. You can also see the status of the lease. By default, the DHCP server will assign IP addresses to any device that requests them. However, sometimes you may want to reserve IP addresses for specific devices, such as servers, printers, or cameras. This is where static DHCP assignments come in handy. Remember, earlier we reserved a range of IP addresses specifically for static assignments. We will now use that reserved range to set up static IP. Click on the plus sign to add a new lease. In the new lease window, enter the IP address you wish to assign to the device. Ensure this address is within the range you have set aside for static assignments. Enter the MAC address of the device that you want to assign a static IP address to. It's good practice to add a comment to identify the device or its purpose in the network. Often you may need to assign a static IP address to a device that is already connected to the network and obtained an IP address dynamically. In the DHCP leases list, you can identify these dynamically assigned addresses by the D flag next to them, which stands for dynamic. To convert it into a static one, simply click on the lease to select it, and then click the Make Static button. The lease will immediately be converted to a static entry, and you'll notice that the D flag has now disappeared, signifying that the IP address is now permanently assigned to that device. Additionally, it's important to understand the DHCP client functionality in Microtic Router OS. When you assign the DHCP client to an interface, it enables that interface to act as a client. In Microtic Routers, the DHCP client is set on the Ether1 interface by default. This is typically done under the assumption that Ether1 will be used as the WAN interface, connecting to your internet service provider. When connected to the ISP's incoming cable, Ether1 automatically receives necessary network configuration details from the ISP's DHCP server. Now let's move on to another important topic, ARP. ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol. It is a protocol that allows devices to find out the MAC address of another device based on its IP address. Why do we need ARP? Well, as we know, IP packets are addressed using IP addresses. But hardware addresses must be used to actually transport data from one host to another. Therefore, we need a way to map IP addresses to MAC addresses. This is where ARP comes in. Imagine you have a device that needs to send a frame to another device within the local network. To do so, it needs to find out the MAC address associated with the intended IP address. The device will broadcast an ARP request onto the network. 
The message is sent to all devices on the local network because the requesting device does not know the MAC address of the destination. The device on the network that has the requested IP address will respond with an ARP reply. This message is sent directly to the device that originated the request using the MAC address provided in the ARP request frame. Upon receiving the ARP reply, the originating device updates its ARP table, which is a list of IP addresses and the corresponding MAC addresses. With the correct MAC address, the device can now frame packets to be sent to the destination device. The data link layer uses the MAC address to ensure the packet reaches the correct destination on the local network. You can see the ARP entries by going to IP ARP. By default, Microtic uses Dynamic ARP. This means that the router will automatically create an ARP entry for each device that communicates with it. Dynamic ARP has the advantage of being easy to use and maintain, as you don't have to manually configure anything. However, it can be less secure, as it allows any device to connect to the network without manual verification, potentially exposing the network to unauthorized access or ARP spoofing attacks. We will demonstrate spoofing attack later in this tutorial. To overcome these drawbacks, you can use static ARP. Static ARP means that you manually enter the IP address and MAC address pairs in a table on the router. The router will then only communicate with the devices that match the entries in the table. To use static ARP on Microtic, you'll need to disable the automatic ARP mode on the interface that connects to your local network. Go to Interfaces in the main menu and double-click the interface you want to modify. In the Interface Properties window, look for the ARP setting. By default, it's set to Enabled. Click on the ARP field and change it to Disabled. This stops the interface from dynamically learning ARP entries. With Dynamic ARP disabled on the interface, you can now proceed to manually add static ARP entries. You can do this by going to IP ARP. Click on the plus sign to create a new entry. This is where you'll manually specify the IP and MAC addresses. For each device you want to add, enter the corresponding IP address in your network and its unique MAC address. The IP address should be within your network's IP range, and the MAC address should be the hardware address of the device. Now, whenever the router communicates with the devices on the interface Ether 5, it will only use the static ARP entries. What this means is the router will only communicate with the devices you've listed. It won't recognize or talk to any devices that aren't in your static ARP list. To balance security and convenience, you can use a combination of DHCP and ARP options, such as Add ARP for Leases and Reply Only. Let's imagine this scenario. A packet from the internet arrives at the router, intended for Alice's laptop. The router has an existing dynamic ARP entry for Alice's laptop from when she initiated a connection to the internet. An attacker compromises the local network and connects to it. The attacker then sends an unsolicited ARP reply to the router, falsely claiming that the MAC address associated with Alice's IP address is actually the attacker's MAC address. The Microtic router, operating in a standard ARP mode, accepts this unsolicited ARP reply and updates its ARP table with the incorrect MAC address. As a result of the poisoned ARP table, the Microtic router redirects the packet intended for the Alice's computer to the attacker instead. It is called ARP spoofing attack, where a malicious device pretends to have the IP address of another device and intercepts its traffic. Now let's see what happens when the Microtic router is set to reply only mode and add ARP for leases enabled. When Alice connects to the router and requests an IP address from the DHCP server, the server automatically creates a static ARP entry for her device. If the attacker then sends an unsolicited ARP reply to the router, the router checks its ARP table, which contains entries created by the DHCP server. Since the attacker's MAC address does not match any entry in this table, the router ignores the spoofed ARP reply. As a result, the packet from the internet is correctly forwarded to Alice's laptop. To use the Reply Only option on Microtic, you need to complete two steps. First, enable the Add ARP for Leases option on the DHCP server, and secondly, set the ARP mode to Reply Only on the interface. To enable the Add ARP for Leases option, navigate to IP DHCP server. Double-click on the DHCP server and check the Add ARP for Leases box. 
This setting allows the DHCP server to automatically create a static ARP entry for each device that obtains a DHCP lease. Next, set the ARP mode to reply only on the interface that is connected to your local network. To do this, go to Interfaces in the menu, double-click the required interface, and in the General tab of the Interface Properties, choose Reply Only from the ARP drop-down menu. This will set the ARP mode to Reply Only on the interface Ether 5. Now whenever the router receives an ARP request from a device on the network, it will only reply if there is a matching ARP entry that was created by the DHCP lease. With Reply Only mode and Add ARP for leases, the Microdeck router's communication with devices on the network is governed by the static ARP entries created by the DHCP server, ensuring secure and verified network interactions without complicating user access. Remember, mastering DHCP and ARP on Microdeck can significantly streamline your network management. We hope you have enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.